You're watching Car Babble. I'm Ewan. And if you've been keeping an eye on my channel, you'll know that I recently purchased a BMW 3 Series, the F30 previous generation of the 3 Series, and it's the 320D X Drive. Unfortunately, it's gone into BMW for some unexpected repairs, and I'm slightly concerned what the total bill's going to be. Two days and counting, it's been there, and yet the only silver lining is they've given me a courtesy car, which is this the G20, the latest generation of the 3 Series. And I thought, hmm, maybe this presents an opportunity to make some extra content for the channel and tell you about my first impressions of the differences I've noted from the G20 to the F30. Now, it's important to also say that the G20 has widely been reported as having some performance improvements over the F30. And I'm not comparing apples with apples here. This is the 318D diesel rear wheel drive and I drive a 320D diesel X drive. So I don't want to do too much talking about performance. You can Google the stats and see for yourself where the G20 excels. And you'd expect that from a slightly newer car. However, there are a lot of differences I've noticed since I've got in this G20 over the F30. And they're not always necessarily better. So in this video, I'm going to give you 10 differences I found from the very short time I've been driving this car. So if you enjoy my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Otherwise, buckle up and let's get into it. <laughs> G20 is a bigger car. It's longer, it's wider, and it has a longer wheelbase than in the F30, which is great if you've got kids in the back because it means they've got more rear legroom, and that is decent. However, this is meant to be a compact executive sedan saloon, and yeah, it's really starting to not feel quite like a compact car. It's a big car. Amazingly, it's actually lighter than the F30, but for me, I'm not quite sure it feels quite as nimble on its feet as the F30, and it's certainly not gonna be as easy to park, but yeah, it's starting to feel a bit like an old 5 Series. With the G20, they launched it with iDrive 7, which is quite a step forward from the iDrive 6 and the iDrive 5, which is the one that's in my F30. And yeah, it really is the main thing, I think, that makes this car seem leaps ahead of the F30. It's a massive touchscreen. You've got the rotary controller. You've got really good voice control. You've got more buttons on the steering wheel. So the ways you can actually use this is they've covered all bases basically. Whereas the F30, for all it was, one of the best systems out there not too long ago, feels pretty archaic in comparison. So yeah, it is a much better system than this. It's more customizable as well. The graphics are great. However, it's gonna be much more of a steep learning curve to get used to it. The ZF gearbox in the F30 was always said to be one of the best gearboxes out there. So I don't know how they managed to make it better in the G20, but somehow they did. It seems more intelligent at picking the right gear in certain situations. However, the thing I've mostly noticed is when you're coming off the line, when you put your foot down, it's good to go. It just pounces. There is no lag. And I found that particularly useful when I was late for work the other day. It really just seems to be a little bit snappier off the line at a roundabout or a junction. You want to nip out. It just goes. There is no lag at all. And that's not to say the F30 was laggy but they have done something to this to make it even better. When I first got my F30, I was like, oh God, I could really do with having a digital speedo in a head up display or a digital cockpit, which you were able to get laterally. But yeah, I've come to love my retro dials with the analog speedos and things and rev counters. Just feels old school, like a proper race car. And yeah, they had the opportunity to do something special with this digital cockpit in the G20 and it's just not very good. Um, well, I don't know what they were smoking, whoever designed the rev counter, because it goes anti-clockwise. So, yeah, not really feeling that. It's really dark. It's really not very customizable. It just is a missed opportunity. It could just be my F30 that's got something wrong with it, but the manual seat adjustment in it compared to the G20 is really not very good. In fact, I would just say that the G20 is functional for a manual seat as opposed to my F30 being a pain in the neck. Basically, when you crank up the seat in the G20, you go up and you pump it down, you go down. In the F30, when you crank it up, nothing seems to happen unless you get out of the seat and then it just springs up like it's ejecting you from the seat, even though technically I'm having to be outside the car to do this. Could be something to do with the fact that I'm, you know, needing to lose a few pounds, but I'm just finding it really quite annoying. And if my wife's been in the car before I have, yeah, I'm usually having to drive along and then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to fix the seat and stop the car and get out to fix it. 
you cannot get a manual handbrake in the G20 at all. So if you're one of these purists that really, really loves to have that, or maybe likes to do handbrake turns in the Tesco car park at 2 a.m. to show off, yeah, you're out of luck, I'm afraid. You can't get one. Um, I think it's great because I prefer the minimalist look and it just feels less cluttered. And yeah, I just think manual handbrakes have had their day and I'm happy to move on. The standard LED headlights you get in the G20 are really, really sharp and really bright. And I have thought that when I've got my high beam on, they seem to see a little bit further than the LEDs in my F30. You can also upgrade to laser lights, laser, in the uh, G20. And apparently they are a thousand times more intense than an LED. Although I hope they're not a thousand times more bright than an LED. Otherwise, oncoming traffic is probably going to die. Now, I love my tunes, so I feel like I have to weave something into this video about the stereo, even though this has only got a standard stereo and it sounds okay, and yet yeah, it doesn't have the upgraded Harman Kardon, which my F30 does. However, what I can say is it's got much better sound insulation and it's much quieter in here, even at high speeds, really, really refined. So my assumption is if you had really good tunes, the clarity is going to be even better. I always think that the door close in a car is a good sign of the build quality, and I think the G20 just edges it over the F30. Really good thunk. I don't know if you could hear that, but the F30 wasn't bad, but that is slightly better. And I would generally say that the build quality in here feels like it's gone up a notch. The steering in the F30 has never been an area of concern for me. It's not its strongest suit, but it is still decent enough. However, in the G20, They've obviously done a little bit of work on this here as well, and it's just a little bit sharper and tighter, and it just encourages you to throw it around a little bit more and explore the extra stiffness of the G20 chassis. It's ace. So there you have it, uh, 10 differences between the F30 and G20, and I think it seems a clear win so far for the G20. And I say so far because I've only had a little bit of time with this car, and I don't know when I'm handing it back, so I don't know if I'm gonna have more time to give you more updates and tell you more about this car but yeah i think it seems to excel in most of the key areas which i'm not surprised at you'd expect the newer car to be mainly better but i do think the f30 can still put a smile on your face the key question really is does the g20 bring the game on enough to justify the price hike over the f30 if we're talking about a used buy uh g20 with like up to 40,000 miles on the clock versus an equivalent late life f30 yeah, you're going to be anywhere from three to five grand more for the G20. So do you think the improvements based on what I've said so far, and if you Google the performance stats, suggest that it's worth that extra money? For me, the tech, the infotainment, that whole area is where it really, really works. And yeah, I think it probably does justify that price. But those are my thoughts. I'd love to know yours. So please do leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.